For all this, let's bring in Marcus Kulga, who is a journalist and political analyst. It's a pleasure uh, for you being on the show. Thank you for your time. Firstly, um, are you hearing anything on these reported irregularities? I mean, and have they affected the result at all? Well, it's unsure whether they've affected the results, but but certainly there have been widespread allegations of uh, irregularities. This includes uh, uh, ballot box stuffing. Uh, there have been all sorts of videos that have been posted to social media that show uh, individuals dumping handfuls of ballots into ballot boxes. Uh, there's been some uh, some reports of forced voting. Uh, employees at state-run uh, companies and such have been told to vote for United Russia. And there's, of course, uh, voter intimidation that's been going on and carousel voting. This is the process by which uh, voters are taken from one constituency to another and they vote in multiple uh, polls. And so these are happening. Uh, the, the total number of, of current irregularities, uh, as reported by several Western outlets, is about 4,500 at this point. So uh, there's a, a lot of, uh, there are a number of irregularities. And again, the effect on the vote right now is, is uncertain. Uh, can you just explain a bit more on what this parliamentary win would mean for Putin? Well, I mean, what we've been seeing over the past 12 months is that very clearly Vladimir Putin will not tolerate any sort of challenge uh, or any sort of criticism to his control of the Russian government. Um, it was very important for Vladimir Putin to win another majority. Uh, I mean, win, I put that in quotation marks. Uh, he needed to win this majority in order to continue uh, his own, uh, maintain his own power uh, as president. He'll be facing another election. Election in, in four years. And uh, as your reporter er, reported earlier, uh, he's trying to pass some constitutional amendments to uh, extend his own term beyond uh, the, the next election to potentially 2036. Um, so he needs that majority in the parliament uh, to continue uh, and remain in power and to uh, control the, the, uh, the overall Russian government. So despite the partial results showing that uh, the United Russia Party uh, uh, possibly winning, it says that uh, the party has lost about one-fifth of its support. Why is that? Well, it, it looks like they're headed to uh, winning 40 to 45 percent of the vote. This is much lower than the previous uh, election. And it's entirely possible that uh, Alexei Navalny and the opposition through their smart voting campaign that was running up until uh, about a week ago, uh, that that may have had an effect and that, that Russian voters were using that system them in order to vote for uh, opposition candidates. Um, another uh, serious uh, factor playing into this election is voter apathy. Uh, less than 30 percent of Russians went to the to the polls uh, over the past three days uh, in places like uh, the illegally occupied peninsula of Crimea. Of course, this is the, the peninsula and part of Ukraine that Russia attacked in 2014. Uh, voter turnout has been less than, reportedly, less than 3%. So there aren't a lot of Russians who are keen to vote or were keen to vote in these elections. Um, and, and I think that probably played a, uh, a large uh, role in, in the outcome today as well. All right, Marcus Koga in Toronto. Once again, appreciate your time. Thank you.